In the last episode of Soap, the Tates were very down when they learned what was up with Jessica and Malagway, and that there was no word about Billy who had gone down there to try and rescue her. Jody was down because he and Maggie are still searching the country and have yet to come up with Wendy. Danny and Bert were definitely up when Gwen came down to the office to testify against Tibbs. But something is up, and neither Gwen, Danny, nor Bert are aware of what is going down. El Puerco got so down on things in Malaguay that Jessica convinced him to go up to Connecticut and fight the revolution from her house. And the Tates are down in the dumps because their cash supply is definitely down. Confused? You won't be after this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. And these are the Campbells. And this is Soap. Danny, we have to have a little talk. Yeah, what's up, Bert? You got this whole town in an uproar. 42 tickets for tailgating? <laughs> you should have seen that mess. It was a potential nightmare. They can't help it if they're bumped with a bumper. It's rush hour. <laughs> I don't make the laws. I just enforce them. Danny, look, please. If you want to ride shotgun for me, you got to have something in the barrel. <laughs> you got to have something in the barrel. I love that. No, Danny, please, I'm talking about you have to learn how to interpret the law. All right, now, for example, say somebody does something wrong. Not a lot wrong, a little wrong. Now, suppose the wrongdoer is the right guy. Well, now, there's a fine line between right and wrong. And sometimes you have to let a person have the right to be wrong. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, listen to this, Bert. I'm afraid to. <laughs> Fact! There have been two murders in the last four years in Dunn's River. Fact! Both of those murders have gone unsolved. What is the point? Don't you see? The writing's on the wall. Those victims were killed in the same place. Danny, what are you talking about? Sam Ogilvy was killed on North Street. All man Jennings they found on Melrose. How can you tell me that they were killed in the same place? Look at the map. There's North, and there's Melrose. Those murders took place less than an inch apart. <laughs> Hello, Bert. Oh, Chester Dutch, fine. How you doing? Fine. Just fine. Look, if you guys are here to see your parole officer, Wally's not here on Tuesdays. That's not why we're here. Yeah, we want to make a deal with you. Shut up, Dutch. <laughs> Bert, you're one heck of a guy. Thanks, Chet. It's been nice talking to you. Giving up a prospering business to help the community. You're one heck of a guy, Bert Campbell. What do you want, Chester? I beg your pardon? What do you want, Chester? Bert, I'm taken back. What do you want, Chester? <laughs> what could I possibly want? Yeah, we want to buy your construction company. Would you put a lid on it? Bert, because you're one Heck of a guy. Dutch and I are willing to take Campbell and Son construction off your hands. <laughs> hey, hey, can you picture Chester welding girders in a three-piece suit? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't weld girders. That's what I have Dutch for. I'll be busy keeping my eye on the cash flow. <laughs> Chester, you're an embezzler. Ah. Bert, this is no time to nitpick. <laughs> Bert, do you remember when we had the big blizzard and I had Benson dig your car out? Mm -hmm. How about giving me the company? No, that's still, I don't think so, Justin. Bert, 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 I think that you will find this bit sufficient. Guys, look, please, I don't know. <laughs> Chester, are you crazy? Torelli Construction Company offered us double that. We'll triple it. 
you little idiot? What are you yelling at me for? You said the company was worth five times what we're offering them. Have you heard from your brain lately? <laughs> Guys, come on, relax. Look, look, I don't know if I want to sell. I mean, for a couple of reasons. For one thing, I'm not going to be wearing this badge forever. And secondly, something you don't understand is it's my company. I worked my whole life to have my name mean something. And today, all the name Campbell means is soup. But Bert, you'll still retain 20% of the company? I don't think so. 40%. Bert, may I borrow one of your pistols? <laughs> Look, wait, look, guys, wait a minute. I don't know what to do. Uh, let me have a conference with my associate, all right? <laughs> Danny, Danny. <laughs> now, look, now, now, look, I don't know. I am very skeptical. What do you think? About what? <laughs> My partner and I have conferred, and we think this idea was a ridiculous idea. Very well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'm certainly not going to beg. Come along, Dutch. Oh, Bert, please! Please let me have a company! Please let me have a company, Bert! Oh, please! Pretty please! What do you say? Should I hose him down? <laughs> Come on, big guy, get up! You're making a fool of yourself! Look, guys, I know what you're thinking. Then I'm a murderer, right? No, I can live with that. Ditto. Did I escape from prison? Don't be silly. <laughs> the jester is a lowlife. Hey. <laughs> Shut up! Look, I know I'm asking for a break that I don't deserve, but I'm turning my life around. I got a wife now, and I want to have a family. This is my only shot, Bert, and I'm going to make good on it. I give you my word. Come on, Dutch, please. I don't want to say... I'm in a very funny position here. Jester, I... I... I'd like to confer with my associate again. Absolutely. Confer. Thank you, Bert. I mean that. Thank you. I told you this would be a piece of cake. <laughs> Danny, look, I don't know. I just, I don't trust him. I know he means well, and I know that we could keep an eye on him, but still... You know what I mean? Uh-huh. But your mother, she'd never forgive me to let this poor guy go on to welfare. Uh-huh. Chester, right? Yeah, Chester. But he's a crook. He's an embezzler. But he's family. Do you know what I mean? Not at all. <laughs> it's like talking to wool. <laughs> oh, 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 look, I, guys. You got a deal. Oh, thank you, Bert. Thank you. Oh, just <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> all right, now, on one, one condition here, Dutch. You're the president. It's a deal. President Bert. The guy has an IQ lower than his shoe size. <laughs> Bert, you won't regret it. Just to pay him. All right. This is an IOU. <laughs> IOU? You not going to pay me anything? Are you serious? Where would I get that kind of money? <laughs> hey, Bert, don't worry. We ain't got the money yet, but we'll earn it. That's right. Come on, Dutch, let's get down to the pier and get that steel shipment. Whoa, wait, what steel shipment? The cheap stuff from Hong Kong. The buildings will look the same. They'll just sway a little. Take over for a while. Oh, no, 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 no. You insult my manhood. Why, El? Let a woman huff and puff and strain her little arms while Carlos, El Puerco Valdez, he sit around and do nothing? No, no, no. Well, at least let me take what, one what? oar and I'll sit beside you for a while. Oh, uh, that's all right. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I did miss you while you were sleeping, my little chili pepper. <laughs> I think we could just dip into our food supply again. Hi, huh? querida. There is only two breath mints left. So, well, could we just then have a little sip of water? 
The canteen, she is empty. She is? Yeah. Oh, Ella, why didn't we plan this better? I mean, we should have had a big yacht huh? standing by, you know, just in case the revolution failed. Oh, no, no. No, that would be negative thinking. Uh, true. But we would have had food and water, and we would have had some warm clothes. Oh, Elle, I am so cold. Oh. Here, hold me. I know, Jessica. Mm. No, no, we can't do that. No, no, no. We are not married. Well, I only want to keep warm, El. Yes, but it might lead me to the impure thoughts. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. How could I thus desecrate you, my Madonna? No. Well, you could desecrate me a little, huh? No, 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 no. We cannot sin being so close to death. Death? Well, it doesn't look good. Well, just think about it, you know? A few more days in this uh, scorching sun and, and your tongue is gonna swell, your hair will freeze up, your, your, your eyeballs will, will burn and pop out of your head and you'll probably die. My hair will frizz up? <laughs> the mind does. Oh, El, <laughs> look. It's the light, the dawn. Oh, El, after the darkness came the dawn. First we freeze, and then we fry. <laughs> There's got to be land out there somewhere. There just has to be. Sure. Well, there will be. In the meantime, El, we have to keep our spirits up. <laughs> <laughs> row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. I know that. Row, row, row your boat rema, gently rema, down the rema, stream. Rema, 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 tu barco suavemente merrily, por el mundo. Alegremente, 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 la vida es... <laughs> Stay behind the line. <laughs> okay, mister, that's it. I'm closing. You're a ringer. What? You're a pro, a hustler. I'll take three more balls. Hey, pal, I told you I'm closing. You can't close. Article 2, paragraph 1 of the Carnival Act, and I quote, as long as you got prizes and patrons, you got to let them play. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You're wiping me out, pal. What do you want from me? Look, I told you I'm not leaving until I get a little information. Jody, Jody, this is Fluffy, the carnival's half man, half dog. He responded when I showed him the picture of Carol. You know her? I think you're supposed to give him a treat. You know this girl? Have you seen her lately? Here, here, give her back. Give it oh. to him. What was that? Certs. You give a dog certs? What, I'm supposed to carry around a box of liver snaps? Hey, hey, hey. Are you talking to me? Hey, listen, listen. Listen, boy, you want to fetch? Huh? You want to fetch? You want to fetch? Huh? Listen, tell me where the girl in the picture is. She's in China. <laughs> Look, Maggie, this isn't going to work out. I don't think so. Hey, listen, uh, thanks for your time, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go, here you go, boy, here you go. All right, listen, three more balls, let's go. Oh, come on, go pitch baseballs. They got some new teddy bears in there today. I told you, I'm not leaving until I get a little information. But don't you understand? I'm a carny. We live by a code. You could burn my eyes out. You could stick my head underwater. You could even audit me, but I'll never talk. How about if I give you your dolls back? What do you want to know? Look at the picture. Do you know this girl? Maybe I do, and maybe I don't. Look, pal, I don't give a damn about your code. That's my daughter we're talking about. So either you give me the information, or I'll stuff these dolls on your fat throat. She was working with Zippo, the fire eater. What about the baby? Oh, you mean Wendy? Yeah, that's my little girl. Cute kid. She worked real well with the midgets. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last I heard, there was one in a tamale stand somewhere. First cowboys, and clowns, dog people. And now she's with a Mexican fire eater. And she almost got custody because I'm gay? Listen, where did this uh, normal American couple run off to? Albuquerque. Where in Albuquerque? 
You go up to Highway 40, you come to a cross in a road, you take the right cross, you stay on your left, you go as far as you can. You can't miss it. Other than that, I'm not telling you nothing. Great, let's go. <laughs> L. Hmm? <clears throat> yes, Red. Isn't there anything left to eat? Well, there's just one tic tac. <laughs> you take it. No, you take it. No. All right, we'll share it. Uh, I, I will bite her in two. Oh! <laughs> I, I feel like such an estupido. You know, I lose the revolution, I lose our way, and now I lose our last tic-tac. Oh, Fred L., I doubt that it would have tided us over anyway. I also lost my three ones. L., tell me the truth. We're going to die soon, aren't we? Jess, Jess. Are you saying Jess, Jess, or yes, yes, or yes, Jess? Jess? Yes? See? Si. Uh, I was hoping not to die again so soon. Uh, this vacation hasn't been very much fun for you, has it? Well, I don't have any regrets, really. Except that I, I had hoped to buy some baskets. <laughs> oh, El, I am so hungry. Oh. If only we could just catch a fish. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you know, I have been praying all my life. And never have I got results like that before. Oh. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a catch boat. Oh, here, <laughs> let me get that from you. Oh, oh, it's a beauty. My first catch. Mom! No, 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 it's over. Billy! Billy! Oh, Billy, can it be true? Oh, no, it can't be true. I'm just wishing it. I'm just imagining no, Mom, it. Mom, Mom, it's me. Feel me, feel me. I'm real. Oh. Oh, Billy, you're made out of rubber. No, it's a wetsuit. How did you get here? Uh, well, that's a long story. But how did you get here in the middle of the Atlantic? Now, I know your swimming couldn't have improved that much. No, Mom, I'm staying at the Club Men Martinique. Uh, we're just a few yards from the beach, see? Martinique! Ah, I knew it was around here someplace. You see that? I got us here without a compass. Vaya el puerco, lord of the sea. <laughs> Mom, do you know this guy? Oh. My manners, I'm so sorry. This is my dear friend, Carlos Marcelo David Escobar Rodriguez, el puerco Valdez. <laughs> el, this is my son, Bill. Your son is a shiny, bald, black man? <laughs> Billy, I am so proud of you taking time out of your vacation to come and rescue us. No, I'm not vacationing, Mom. I left home to find you. Only the plane couldn't land in Malagway because of the revolution. I would like to express the gratitude of a grateful nation. But I don't have a nation at this moment. <laughs> However, I soon will. <laughs> so for now, let me kiss you in a manly way. <laughs> no, that's OK. Thanks. <laughs> However, from this moment and henceforth, I dub you General Billy, Sobrino de Puerco. What does that mean? Nephew of the pig. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Come on out. I got something to eat. See you next week, man. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, Dr. Yellowich, take care. Hi. When did you come in? 
Is that all you have to say? Hi, when did you come in? What's the matter? Who the hell was that? Dr. Yalowitz. He's a regular. A regular what? Client. What's the matter with you? <laughs> you're asking me what's the matter with me? I'm trying to keep you safe, and you're in there making love with a quarter pounder. He doesn't even touch me. We play a game called fast food. I'm the grill girl. He just lays there, and I turn him over every few minutes. That's all. <laughs> Oh, well, don't I feel foolish? <laughs> and here I was thinking it was something ridiculous. Danny. How can you do that? It's my job. Indiscriminate sex with anybody who's got the money? No, not indiscriminate. If I don't like a guy, I don't take him on. <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? Hey, hey, it's no concern of mine how you make your living. I? I think you're jealous. Jealous? Ha! Boy, that's funny. Very, very funny. Jealous. <laughs> Me jealous? <laughs> Boy, that's a laugh. <laughs> I'm laughing. Ha! Do you want to make love to me? I'm a cop, Gwen. <laughs> I'm a good cop. I'm honest. I'm clean. I try and make this town safe for everyone. Yes. Okay. But I can't. Look, could you just promise me to shut down operations until this whole thing blows over? You're the first guy who ever asked me not to do what they normally pay me to do. Promise me. Okay. I promise. I won't hook until you say it's okay. Great. That's a big load off my mind. You really do? What? Want to make love. Yeah. But I can't. I mean, I can. <laughs> I just, uh, won't, you know? No. You see, I would be committing a crime. Yeah, I'm a cop. Yeah, I would have to arrest myself, and frankly, I don't think I could do it. You know, knowing me, I'd probably try and set an example, and I'd throw the book at me, and then where would I be? I could just give me a reprimand. <laughs> Now that Billy has rescued Jessica and Elle, will they all make it home safely to Connecticut? Will Jess and Billy become bilingual? Now that Chester and Dutch are in the construction business, will it give their lives a new foundation? Now that Danny and Gwen are thinking of making love, will Danny have to throw the book at himself? Will Jody and Maggie have any luck at the tamale stand in Albuquerque? Or will they just get heartburn? These questions and many others will be answered in the next episode of Soap.